You want that vision to be seen immediately to the limbic system of your brain because that's where your flight and fight response is located. So you have to be able to respond quickly to something. So there's a correct connection. Unfortunately, that's where all your emotions are located too. So all your emotions of fear, anger, lust, all those things are located in the same part of the brain. So anything you see directly stimulates that part of your brain. So everything you look at directly stimulates your emotions. The strength of your emotions can cancel out your logical thinking of your brain. That is why you should never make an important decision under stress or with your emotions. So how is America being blinded? Society is being blinded by the propaganda, lies, and misinformation shown on flat screens. National news media, big tech, Hollywood, vital educational system, radical organizations, Marxist, far left government officials are constantly trying to control every aspect of life. They are relentless and will do nearly anything and everything to change and accomplish their goals. Americans are addicted to their flat screens. The average American spends 10 to 12 hours a day looking at a flat screen of some size and shape. Flat screens are addictive, and their images stimulate the same area of the brain as drugs and alcohol. The dopamine released in the brain is the same as using drugs. It is a tough addiction to overcome, and the secular world knows it. Studies have shown that as much as 90% of communication is visual. Your vision uses more than 50% of your brain function. That's how complex your vision system is. Between vision and perception, more than 50%. So there's much more to vision than being able to see 2020 on the wall in my office. That's just the beginning. It's perception of what you see that becomes things become complex. How is it possible for two people to look at the same thing and see something different? Someone's right, maybe, or they're both wrong, but someone thinks they know what they're seeing and they observe things correctly. But it turns out that happens incorrectly all the time. How many people go to prison because the eyewitness was wrong and chose the wrong person? It happens all the time. So with that, what the Bible says in Job 32, verse 8, you are lost and blind to the realities of life. But it is the spirit in a person, the breath of the Almighty, that gives them understanding. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 9 through 12. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only a part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfect, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with, with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me can do. So what is pure vision? What I'm calling pure vision could also be known as spiritual vision. Another way to see this, pun intended, would be imagine seen through the eyes of Jesus. We can never obtain that, but our goal as Christians is to strive to be like Jesus continually. As I says in 1 Corinthians, eventually we will obtain pure vision when the time of perfection comes. What is this referring to? This is talking about the completion of the Bible. We now have complete knowledge of everything we need to know from the perfect book, the Bible. There's no more revelation from God needed. God wants us to mature and grow spiritually. Spiritual maturity comes from those who read the Bible and believe it. Look at the book of James, what it says here. So James 1, verses 3 through 4. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Well, when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. James 1 gives us a challenge to endure and run the race until the end. 
So maybe some of us might be able to someday get close to pure vision. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do is right. So 2 Timothy says, tells us to use scripture as our guide through life as we mature in our Christian faith. We start out believing like a child, but mature as Christians through reading the Bible, study, observation, prayer, and worship. Our vision becomes pure, and our vision of life changes. You and I don't see our faith as we did when we were younger. Like I said before, there's much more to vision than just reading 2020 on the wall of my office. That's why our aware perception is so important. If you have 2020 vision, but abysmal perception skills, you'll be lost and not able to graduate towards pure vision. Pure vision and perfect perception are synergistic. <clears throat> Helen Keller's famous quote is, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. So for a lady who was born blind and deaf, pretty remarkable statement. One of the most significant factors affecting your perception is your paradigm, which is unique to each and every one of us. Your perception is under the control of your paradigm. Your paradigm comprises all your life experiences and is constantly being influenced by the outside secular world. Many Bible verses talk about people being blind to reality. And here's one example. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So that's what is happening in the world today. It's precisely what is described in the Bible. The difference today is that everyone is addicted to their flat screens. There was no flat screen until a few decades ago. Now everyone has multiple flat screens, including one you probably have with you right now. Satan has it easy today. Influencing the world through flat screens. Just like, look how society is crumbling today. Satan and the second world are in charge of what people see and view every day. The scary thing is that technology will keep advancing and visual stimulation will become more addictive, not less. The amount of flat screen time will continually increase over time. What you view and observe daily determines who you are as a person and affects your mental, physical, and spiritual health. So these are a couple of favorite verses being an eye doctor in the Bible that I like. So Matthew 6, 22 and 23, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that our darkness is? There are several aspects to these Bible verses. If we look at this from a biological standpoint, you can live a healthy, happy, prosperous life if you have good vision. You'll have a fruitful life in society. You'll have a good chance of having a good job and living a successful life. You can do that without vision, but that becomes much more difficult if you don't have, if you don't have good vision. Your eye or what you look at determines how you feel physically and mentally. As you look at things that negatively stimulate your limbic system, your body becomes unhealthy. Stimulating your limbic system, the emotional center of your brain, releases all kinds of chemicals and free radicals into your brain and body tissue. These chemicals released from the stimulation lead to many of the diseases that we suffer today. The addiction to looking at flat screens for hours a day affects you mentally. It isolates you. Everything you see posted by people here is as perfect as they Photoshop everything you see. You begin to feel depressed and lonely. The prevalence of mental disease has skyrocketed from flat screens. Therefore, while you spend your time watching, observing, focusing on, will eventually determine your body's health and mental status. Your spiritual well-being is also affected by the things you observe every day. If you read the Bible daily, attend church regularly, pray daily, look at good and wholesome things, you will have a closer relationship with God. 
You'll be filled with the light of Jesus Christ. If you're always watching bad things, sinful things, you would be spiritually dead. The end of the verse is just terrifying. When you look at unhealthy things, your mind and perception are filled with darkness. It is a darkness so deep that you may never recover from it. People are unaware of the darkness and predicament they are living in. They are blind and lost. So what God observes affects you physically, mentally, and spiritually. So I've been talking about perception. What is perception? It is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through your senses. It's intuitive understanding and insight. The quality of being aware of things that through physical senses, especially your sight. What is perfect perception? We take these definitions and we add the ability to see or perceive spiritually. So being a Christian and using scripture as your guide leads you to perfect perception. Many of the factors affect your perception. One of the most powerful factors in determining perfection is context. If you take lukewarm water, it may feel hot or cold depending on context. If you put your hand in a bucket of ice water for a couple of minutes and then put it in lukewarm water, it's gonna feel hot. If you put your hand in a heating pad, and just take it in blue, blue form why it's going to feel cooler and cold. So context determines a lot of your perception. There was a study where emotions also play a significant part of a role in your perception. There was a study done where people were standing on top of a hill. Some, one group of people were standing on a skateboard. The other people were standing on that flat box at the same height. The people who were on the skateboard thought the hill was much steeper and the people were standing on a stable flat box. So just that emotion of fear changed the angle of how steep the hill is. So you can see that emotions and context have tremendous influence on your perception. Your motives, desires, and needs will also significantly influence your perception. Another factor affecting your perception is the immense amount of activity in your mind. Your mind is actually calculating trillions of calculations per second. Though until recently, even the largest computer in the world was not as fast as your brain. It's that complex. You're only aware, though, of a finite amount of that process that's going on. You cannot be aware of all the information that's going on in your brain. You're only, and you're not even focused on everything in your right around this room in your environment. There are gaps in your perception. The simple fact that selectivity has vast consequences and your perception. Your paradigm fills in those gaps, and that's the reason why people a lot of times get their things wrong with what they see and perceive is because they were paying attention to everything and the perception fills in the pieces of your past experiences. So I've been talking about paradigms. What is a paradigm? A paradigm is a set of assumptions, concepts, values, or practices that constitutes a way of viewing, are receiving reality, accepted by a group or community as normal or scientific and <clears throat> correct. Another simple way of saying that is bias. We all have our own biases. Your paradigm is composed of all your experiences, the information you have studied, and all the data that has entered your mind. Your paradigm is unique to you. Even if a twin, you're never going to have exactly the same experience. You'll be maybe more similar than other people, but you still will be differences. Your paradigm will change slowly over time. Your paradigm, uh, like I said, is unique to you. All the information observed daily is stored inside your brain. You believe, have opinions, and think differently as your experience grows. A significant emotional event, though, can change your paradigm quickly, such as a tragedy, a family death, an accident, could change your paradigm rapidly, quickly. The problem is your paradigm may keep you from seeing or observing an event correctly because of your past experience. Many people, like said before, are being convicted of crimes because the eyewitness was completely wrong. So if um, someone had been attacked by a big, burly, huge guy, and they see another incident happening to someone else, they're going to describe the big burly guy. They're not going to describe who has to 
was there, so that's how your paradigm affects what you see. So everything you study, observe, read, research, watch on TV, see on a computer, look at a smartphone, events in the world, and instances that happen to you in your life, mold or form your paradigm. This is who you are as a person. A great example of paradigms, context, and perception is the story about the blind man examining that one. I'm sure many of you heard the story before. So six men were born blind in a village. All the people in the village watched over them to protect them from harm or danger. The men heard stories about elephants and became curious. What was an elephant like? The villagers told them stories about how large they were how powerful they were, and how loud their trumpet calls were. And the men would argue back and forth about elephants. One would say they are powerful giants. The next man would say they are kind and gentle giants because the princess is right on their backs. The next man would argue that elephants is very dangerous as they can pierce a man with a sharp horn. The next man says all of them are wrong. They're just big cats. And one of the men said, the elves don't even exist. Finally, the villagers got tired of the arguing and planned for the blind man to meet the elf. The first blind man touched the elephant's side and said it was huge and smooth like a wall and must be very powerful. The second blind man touched the elephant's trunk and said, it's just like a giant snake. The third man, blind man touched the hard pointed tusk and said, the elephant is sharp and could deadly as a spear. The fourth blind man, touched one of the elephant's legs and said, it's just a large cow. The fifth blind man touched one of the elephant's ears and said, it's like a giant fan or carpet, a magic carpet. Bag. The sixth man touched the elephant's tail and said, it's just a piece of rope. So paradigms are a human database to determine what you perceive as well as context. So the blind men are still arguing over what an elephant is because each has a different perception. So just watch the screen for a moment. Don't be quiet. 
still concentrate. Let's see what you can do.
is dominated by a flat screen. A flat screen is any electronic medium showing you a video, a motion picture, providing social media, or any screen you spend time watching, such as TVs, computers, iPads, wristwatches, smartphones. Flat screens are the dominant method for changing people's beliefs, society, and culture today. As I said, people spend as many as 10 to 12 hours a day on a flat screen of some size or shape. The younger generations never let their smartphone leave their side 24-7. Flat screen use is addicting, just like drugs, as I said before. At first glance, you would say, that's not possible, drugs versus a flat screen. But the use of flat screens releases dopamine in the same area of the brain as heroin or cocaine. Dopamine is the primary neurotransmitter involved in brain, the brain's reward system and the feelings of pleasure. It is released into the brain when someone does something or sees something that warrants a reward, a pleasure response, or even someone anticipates a reward. These rewards include things such as drugs, alcohol use, or sex. The rush of dopamine experience when using cocaine and other drugs causes the euphoria that people feel contributing to their addiction. Flat screen activity can release dopamine to the brain just like drug addiction. The brain becomes addicted to the flat screen the same way as a drug. There is a new fad in Silicon Valley that you may have saw the interview I did called dopamine fast. Even people in Silicon Valley in this social media business realize they're messing up their own brains. And so a professor, Dr. Cameron Sager, in the University of California, San Francisco, came up with the term dopamine fasting. That is, they're recommending that you get away from your flat screen for a period of time. So that could be a day, it could be a couple of days, the weekend, leave it alone, don't look at it, leave it alone, uh, because it is, it is not healthy for your brain. And so, uh, it's just like in a Bible, you know, God says you should take a day of rest. So, I mean, God knows that we need to take a break from what's happening in life. The, uh, actually, the Chinese government decided that flat screen use is not healthy for other young people. And now young people in China can only look at a flat screen for one hour from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night at home. And here our kids are looking at it all day long, 24 hours a day. So we live in a visual world. There are beautiful natural things in the world that God has created and there are images that the humankind has made as well. The simplest flat screen is a single image or photo. You've heard a picture takes a thousand words. That's how much information you can garner from an image. Uh, every day you are bombarded, bombarded with thousands of single frame images on billboards on the side of the road, images on social media, single frame images on TV, images on computers, iPads, newspapers, magazines. The first flat screens were developed to entertain you, but they advanced way beyond that from their beginnings. The first photograph was developed in 1826. If you travel back in time before photographs were invented and you took a Polaroid camera and took a picture of someone and then showed them a picture, they, they would think it was witchcraft that you have captured their soul and put it on, on a piece of paper. A friend of mine who's an ophthalmologist in the Navy got addicted to flat screen. He got addicted to online gaming. He spent 20,000 hours flat on, on, on screen gaming and got addicted. He finally through, became a Christian and through that quit cold turkey and got off of flat screen. He almost lost his marriage and his career in the Navy. He wrote a book pretty good and a nice book about what flat screens do to your brain and the addiction that it causes. Flat screens are used in everything in our life. At work, schools, conference calls, webinars, movies, games, FaceTime, reading books, TV, music, study aid, research, throwing information, just to name a few. Flat screens are constantly used all day, every day. New studies show that flat screen use alters the brains of infants and young children. A study published in JAMA Pediatrics showed that increased flat screen use in children resulted in lower expressive language, decreased literary skills, and less ability to name objects rapidly. 
So we are in an age where flat screens are changing society and culture and blinding America to the realities of life. So I think we'll maybe end there, and I'd like to close with a prayer. And actually, this prayer is a prayer that Janice went on, uh, and uh, it's by Sir Francis Drake, who was a famous British naval commander and captain, and he was the second person to circumnavigate the world. So we may bow our heads. So disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrive safely because we sell too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas, where storms still show your mastery, where the losing of sight of land, we shall find stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. So we'll see you next week.